Hello, everyone. It's six o'clock on a Monday. It is not our usual second Monday of the month, but we are here anyway. So thank you for joining us tonight. We're going to wait for a few minutes while people hop on. Hopefully some people will jump on. Is our sound good? Joe, remember, we all remember to turn the sound on tonight. Can you hear us? Can you see us? You're out there. Oops. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Popping. People are popping on. Yay. Yay. Thank you for joining us on a kind of an off Monday night since we didn't meet um, last Monday. Oh, sure. Can you check in? Just double check the date for May. Yeah. Then we'll just remind everybody that we will meet the next um, second Monday in May. Um, 13. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. I'll, remind, I'll remember that. So, hi, everybody. I'm Karen. We're here at So and Save, and tonight is Patchwork Party Night. Yay! Kelly Molitor, so hi, Kelly Molitor. How are you? Good to see everybody tonight. I hope you had a great Easter. Easter is here and gone, and spring is here. The sun is shining. The grass is growing. Flowers are popping out all over, and I cannot wait to get my gardens going. So I hope everybody's out and having fun. So tonight, if you're watching us, make sure that you like us and share us so that your name goes in to win a gift card at the end of the night. And also, don't forget that everything that I show you tonight is um, in the Patchwork Party section of our website, and that is 20% off um, anything that I show you tonight. So keep that in mind. We thank everybody for joining us, and we'll just wait for another minute or two while people are popping on. Excellent. We got a few coming on. We've got a couple demos for you tonight. New stuff. More new stuff. Yeah, people are liking and sharing already. Thank you for liking us and sharing us. We really appreciate that. Happy to have all of you here tonight. Hey, Kathy Rackow, how are you? I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. So we have um, Sewing Socials and Sleep in Your Own Beds. Check our website to see those because those are happening every month. Um, so we used to take off in the summer, but not this summer. We're going to keep going all summer long and have lots of opportunities for you to join us and sew with us. And so check our calendar because we've got lots and lots of things happening. Um, should we get started? Are we ready to get started? Let me just... We've got 52. Oh, perfect. Um, so make sure that you like us and share us tonight for our patchwork party demo. Um, when you do, your name will go in to win a gift card at the end of the night. So make sure that you like us and share us. And then don't forget that everything that I'm showing you tonight is in the Patchwork Party section of our website. PP20 gets you 20% off your sale. So how about that? How about that? How about that? Okay, where should we start? Should we get started? Where should we start? Let's get started. Okay. Says hi from, from Florida Keys. Oh. No. Did you, how's that new boat? <laughs> they got a new boat. Does it catch bigger fish now? <laughs> I hope so. It better, right? That's because, so he got a boat and she got a sewing machine. Yeah, that'll work. That worked, didn't it, Ursula? Yeah, Absolutely. It did. So I'm going to kind of come around the front and we'll start up here in the front. Lots of really fun things. Um, I'm going to move this so that you can see um, our new pickleball fabric. Yes, pickleball, fastest growing sport in America. And we had some pickleball fabric in earlier, like I, at the beginning of the year, it sold out and it's gone. So now we have some more really super cute. It's got all kinds of pickleball words and slow down, drill baby drill, stay out of the kitchen, all kinds of different words on that. So there's a white background, a navy background, little pickleball paddles. Pickleball words. Oops, I'm going to pop this back over. And then we have little um, pickleball um, bag patterns. Pickleball so you bags. can pickleball bags. You got to have a bag to put all your pickleball stuff in. So Joe's going to take a close look at that. So these would make a really, really cute bag or anything else that you're going to do for pickleball. Really fun. So you'll be all ready. Well, it's already summer. I know a lot of you play pickleball indoors all winter, but. You can be styling with your new pickleball bag. For the kiddos, we have really cute. This is um, from Moda. It's um, part of the Great Outdoors um, fabric line that they have. This is a uh, this is a kit. It's actually a panel that makes a cute little backpack. 
So it makes a cute little bear pack pack. And then look at his mouth. Oops, I can't do it. Here we go. His mouth is a zipper and opens up, and then he's got little teeth. Oh and it has and it has a little fish in it. So this is like his little mouth. Oh, it is hilarious. just adorable. So everything that you need to make this, you know, you'll need some batting and that type of thing on the inside. But all the fabric that you need and everything is on the panel. The instructions are part of the panel. So super cute. I think we have to. You have to provide your own zipper too. So we have these little brown zippers. We should make sure we have plenty of these brown zippers. Yeah, because you'll want that or a tan one even. So super cute. Absolutely cute. Then down here, we have another um, little panel set from Moda, and it's a little campfire. Isn't this adorable? Oops, I lost my hot dog. <laughs> Thank you. I lost my hot dog. Okay, so you have little um, logs, and then you have the little charcoal briquettes. Oops, you're down here. Okay. And flames. And then you have a little stick that you can put your fish on the fire, cook your little fish. Then you have a little hot dog that you can stick on the stick, put over the fire. Isn't this cute? It's warm. I know, it's hot, hot, hot. <laughs> and I'm gonna and I'm gonna sneak over here because then also a campfire would not be a campfire without s'mores. So you have everything that you need to make s'mores. And so you have your little marshmallow that you wrap around your stick and cook. And then you have your little graham crackers and your little chocolate and then your little marshmallows. And one of the ladies had bought the whole kit and somehow she actually did make it fit in her little backpack. <laughs> so, so it's really super cute, a lot of fun. A great thing on a rainy day for the kids to play with. And really, it's everything is just pretty much sewing it together and stuffing it with some fiber fill. So super fun, fast, easy little project to do. And fun for the kids. So cute. I'm losing all my stuff. But that's that. And then we have to go along with that. I'm going to pop this in here just because they're going to fall over. We have this cute little bolt of fabric um, that came along with it. It's called the, called the Great Outdoors. What we're going to do is make a cute little... Um, pillowcase so if the kids are going to camp this summer or just coming over to your house to camp or love camping they can have their own little pillowcase to go on their camping pillow so that's that so some fun stuff for camping and the kids and summer how about that alrighty let's come over here and we're going to look at a new line from Moda that's called Shoreline and it, Joe, it's all of this, and I'm going to pop this up here to get it out of the way, and of this. Really, really pretty blues and greens and kind of a taupey gray in here. Just a really pretty line. We haven't done anything with it yet. It just came into the shop recently. So next month you'll see a little project made out of it. But just really pretty. The flowers are nice. Lots and lots of and the colors are pretty. So just a really nice line of fabric called Shoreline. Cool. And then over here we have a table runner, and it is from the um, da Dainty, no, I'm saying it wrong. Is it Dainty? It is Dandy Duo. No, something like that. Dandy Duo Table Runner. So um, we have kits for this. Really fun, fast, easy project. Um, the instructions are interesting because the instructions, if you have a go cutter, are written to cut from your go cutter. Or you can cut just um, regular like you usually do um, for that. But um, really fun and pretty, pretty table runner for your summer table. New to the store um, are three new um, basics lines. Um, one is from Riley Blake. And two are from P and B, and these are. Um, this one is called Blossoms, so they're little kind of little itty bitty. Can you see close up? Yeah, sure. they're little itty bitty squares or itty bitty teeny weeny flowers um, of mostly all the same colors. Some of them will come in and have different color little flowers. Um, this is really nice because it just gives you a little something um, on your background or in a block. And what's nice is they're kind of scattered all over, so you don't have to worry about cutting 
straight lines like you would on something like this where you might need to cut your flowers all nice and straight. This goes all over, so it's easy, easy, easy to cut and is really pretty for a background. So we'll be getting more of these in. They're going to send us um, like five every couple weeks until we get the whole line. This line is called suede because doesn't it look like suede? It's really pretty from far away. It really, really looks like suede. Really pretty colors, kind of in between a grunge and maybe the, um, the basics from Tim Holt where he has kind of these splashy ones, but then he has like the ink splacks, splotches on them. And sometimes those ink splots, people, some people don't like them and sometimes they just don't work with what you're doing. So this is kind of a nice in-between kind of suede look, has some nice texture as you're working with your projects. And then this line is kind of fun and funky. This one is called grass roots. So it's kind of like a grass cloth. And here again, it's not really straight, straight. So if you don't get everything cut in a straight line, it's okay, because it's kind of an all over pattern. So really kind of hip and trendy, kind of masculine, gives you a lot of texture, gives you a lot of dimension in your blocks as well. So we will be adding to these. So um, great colors, more and more will be coming in and then we'll try to keep them in stock as time goes by. So yeah, they're really, really, they're all really great. So we always try to get some new basics in, kind of switch out the old ones and bring in some new ones. And um, yeah, they're all fun. Hey Karen, how are you? <laughs> Yeah, they're really fun. Yeah, new colors. There'll be new colors coming in like every couple weeks. So keep it. We'll keep, we'll keep you up to date on those. Behind me up on the wall is a quilt called Tranquil Seas. Super fun project to do. Not hard at all. This is just like a nine patch here. You got a square and a kind of a nine patch going on here. Just mostly squares. There's a little few um, flying geese going around but not hard, just really pretty. Um, just very kind of Florida looking even, but just pretty summer quilt. And the size of this quilt is, let me look, I know I have it on here. We have kits available. We have kits for just the pattern and the quilt size is 57 by 69. So it's a nice lap size. It is very pretty, very, very pretty color. So we have kits or just the pattern, whichever you like. And Joe's gonna get a nice kind of close up on all of them. They're all done um, from batiks. So, so pretty. Yeah, very, very cool. Then we've showed you before our crust, what it's Cree, Cree, Cree the dinosaur fabric. <laughs> You've seen, we've had the dinosaur fabric before. Here's our quilt made out of that. And it's called um, Swiss Cretaceous. And so we have our dinosaur in the corner and just really cute. This one is 48 by 54. So a great kid's quilt. If you wanted it a little bigger, you could throw a border on it. Uh, but just, a real, oh, just really fun. And um, it's quilted with little dinosaur track, foot track, footprints. So little dinosaur oh. tracks on there. Yeah, so you can see the little dinosaur oh, yeah. footprints on there. It's so really cute. Super, super easy quilt to make because you have one, two, three squares and a rectangle. One, two, three squares and a rectangle. So it's super easy to make because kids quilts a lot. Sometimes you don't want to put a lot of work into, but you want something really super cute. So we have kits for that and for the tranquil seas as well as just patterns. Very so. These are on our website. PP20 gets you 20% off of those. Yeah. Uh, almost 100 people on. Yay. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you for coming in tonight. If you see something that I don't talk about or you missed it because you came in late, I can always kind of go over it again. Um, this we looked at last month. We kind of talked about it. We were talking about stripology rulers. And we'll do a little bit more chatting about stripology rulers as we go along, but this is called um, Strippy Forest. Oh, and it's in the Strippy, that's what I was going to get, the book. 
the mix, Stripology Mixology book, which we'll throw on to the um, Patrick Party section of our website. And it's in the book. Really fun, super simple project. You're just sewing, you're strip piecing, you're strip piecing, and then you're sewing your strips together and making them into squares. This was so much fun. I did it at a retreat, and it goes together really easy. Super fun to do. So this is all Tim Hope fabric. Even the background is a Tim Hope fabric, and it really gives it a lot of dimension. And his, his fabrics are always just so much fun to do and use and really, really cool. So we have kits of those available as well as the Stripology Mixology book that goes along with that. Yeah, it's really a fun quilt. It was a fun quilt to make. I used the Stripology ruler. If you don't have a strip, it's not required. You can still make it if you don't have a Stripology ruler. It's just these are one and a half inch square or strips. So you can use a regular ruler to do it as well. The Stripology ruler, she... Um, gives you instructions in the book on how to use the Stripology ruler to cut everything, but you can certainly cut it with a regular ruler and you'll be just fine. But the Stripology ruler makes it fun, fast, and easy and pretty accurate too. Um, so <clears throat> fewer mistakes are always good. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you, we talked about this I think last month, probably last month. This is the stylish Posh tote, I think it's called. No, the stylish sewing tote is the big one. So we had the smaller one. Yeah, it's in. It's on our website. It's on the um, Patrick Party section of our website. So we the pattern for both of these. The, one's a tote, one's a caddy. So this is a tote. This is a caddy. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Stylish. And they're both stylish. They're all stylish. <laughs> Absolutely. So what you get in your pattern, you will get your pattern. You will get a zipper, which I did not use. Um, in the little one, you get a pink zipper, and I just, I, I just didn't use it. And in the, um, in the sewing tote, which is the bigger one, you get this pretty green zipper, which is really pretty. I just didn't. I just wanted it to, to match my other project, and it doesn't match. So I put it in my stash and we will use it for something else. And then you also get these little wire frames. And the little wire frames um, are exactly what you need to make your, pop, make your little um, bags pop open and pop wide open. And they kind of stay nice and open so you can dig down in there, add more things if you need to. And the wires give them a lot of um, stability and, the, and it gives it that cute shape that it has. When you close it up, it just automatically does this little kind of pinchy thing in the corners. That's so cute. Yeah. And that was another reason why I used my own zipper because these zippers only had like one zipper pull. And I kind of like, especially for the big one, to have the two zipper pulls. So I used a Bayani zipper and that had the little two zipper pull so I can kind of just go open it up wide. Um, this one has pockets. The small one does not. Um, the big one has two pockets on the, a pocket on each side on the inside and then your pockets on the outside. Um, they have you use fusible fleece. I put, I used my scraps of soft and stable in here because it just, I felt like it gave it more body, made it stand up better. And so this has soft and stable in it. Plus, I quilted it, and they don't quilt theirs. So I thought the quilting also gave it a little bit more style and gives it a little bit more stability. And they're just as cute as can be. It took, it takes, uh, yeah, it took a good, probably two days. Two-day project, because I quilted it. If you don't quilt it, it's quicker. But um, I did quilt everything, because I just like it. I like the look of it being quilted and it gives it more stability. So I added the Biani zippers. I added the soft and stable instead of the um, just regular batting. On the bottom of the big one, they do use like a Peltex, the really heavy duty um, fusible Peltex, which I put on the bottom of this one. This one on the bottom doesn't, they just use regular batting. But you could use a piece of Peltex on the bottom of this too to give the bottom of this one a little bit more stability as well. But super cute. 
So um, I've had a, a, quite a few people buy the pattern and then they want to make more. So then you just need to pick up more of the little wire frames. This one goes on this one, this one goes on this one. Two different sizes. So we have these in stock as well on the Patchwork Party section of your website. PP20 gets you 20% off. And please don't forget to like us and share us. So these are really fun, simple projects to do. Um, it's not a hard bag. There's not um, a lot of binding. It's not a biani bag, so it's not super fussy. It doesn't have 150 pages of instructions. It only had like six or maybe four or maybe five. So yeah, so it's not like a, it's not like a biani bag in which you're gonna spend a week making the bag. Cute, fun projects to get done. So cute. Yeah, they are very sweet. Yeah, a lot of people are saying cute bags. Yeah, and this is the little peachy key from Moda fabric. So I kind of made them so they coordinated because I think they're cuter that way. I have two really fun, um, fun notions for you this month. One is a pedal pad um, from the Gypsy Quilter. You know how you're... You know how your little pe foot pedal keeps sliding, sliding, sliding and whenever you're sewing. Um, these little pedal pads go right under your, the pedal of your sewing machine. And I have the bigger pedal for the bigger sewing machine. And it sits right on this, and I have a tile floor, and it just doesn't move. Like this moves, but it's not moving on my mat. So um, I love it because it's small. So I threw one in my retreat bag because when I come to class here, we have tile floors here. It, um, people were asking because they have kind of like, um, they don't have like a pile carpet. They have like, you know, like, I don't know, like an indoor. It works on carpeting as well as wood floors and tile. So it's a great thing just to throw in your, your, your sewing machine bag and have with you when you come to class because your feet are, are always sliding around on there. And then we have from Riley Blake these real cute little scissors and... Um, tape measure that kind of um, that kind of coordinate match it's these are just fun for yourself or just to give it to one of your quilty buddies um, I kind of have one of these in like my purse <clears throat> so that if I'm out shopping or whatever I go to a quilt shop or I'm out antiquing or something I need to know how big something is I pull out my little tape measure it doesn't take up much room and it's always good to have a little scissors with you wherever you go so a great little cute, cute, cute from Riley Blake. So that's that. And where do you find these? Patchwork party section of our website. PP20 gets you 20% off. So there's that. All righty. What is next? Let's go over here and look at the wine stuff, the wine things. Because I'm going to show you this as a little demo in a second. So we'll show you this one last. Um, I think we showed this last month. We have little um, table toppers or placemats and we have kits for these and you get four different table toppers or placemats in a kit and um, each one has a different little panel in the center so I'll just kind of flip those so you can see them they're very pretty just a really fun twist on wine fabric and table toppers um, some people use them, are making them as table toppers and keeping up one for themselves and then giving the rest as gifts. Makes a great shower gift or a Christmas gift or just a hostess gift if you're going someplace. And um, so that's a lot of fun. A little bottle of wine in one of these is great. Okay, so we have that. And then we also have the table runner. And this is the table runner. I'm just going to hold it this way because you can kind of see. Or should I hold it this way? I don't know which is easier. <laughs> Any way we want. So there's our table runner. And that uses the panel as well. Says water, drink wine. Yeah. That's my, that's my motto. <laughs> and ours is quilted up really cute with little wine bottles and wine glasses. Super cute. So that's fun. What? Great wedding gift. Okay. So there's that. So we have um, just the panels, if you're interested in just the panel, and some of the other fabrics that go along with it. 
really fun and cute. But we also have a um, border stripe. And so this is the border stripe. It's very cool with the wine bottles on either side. I'm going to bring it over here, Joe, because then we're going to kind of show. We made a 60-degree runner out of it. So if you have lot, many, 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 many of you have the 60-degree runner pattern, it is right here. This is the 60-degree runner pattern. And you use your 60-degree ruler. Remember that? Pull that out. Polish it up because that's what we use to make this um, table topper. So the cool thing about this was that when we cut, use the ruler to cut and measure our pieces, we had enough in the center left over to make the back. So you don't have to buy an additional fabric to do the back. Our kits will include the um, border stripe and your binding. And the pattern is sold separately because so many of you have this pattern, but in fast projects, when um, you use the pattern that she has created, in the end what she does is she lays her front and her back together right sides together, sews around and turns it. We like to put a binding on it. It just, we feel like it just makes it look a little bit nicer. And, um, but you can do it either way. You'll have the binding in your kit so that you can put the binding on it. Um, if you use the center fabric, you're not gonna have enough to give the table runner to a quilter. You'll have to quilt it yourself because you're not gonna end up with a lot of extra for the quilter to be able to quilt it. So you do have to quilt it yourself. We just kind of mirrored the center and kind of, you can just draw lines. And we just did kind of that long, might be even easier to see on the back. You can kind of see, it's very simple. Straight lines and just mirrored the, yeah. the design. Very cool. You can do this. You don't have to send it out to a quilter. You can do it yourself. So by cutting, and using your 60 degree ruler, you will end up with enough fabric in the center to make your back. Sweet, great use of fabric. We love it when we can use up every piece of the fabric that we have. So that is that. Any questions on that? Okay, excellent, yeah. A lot of people have made the 60 degree runners and they're a lot of fun. So the other thing that we did with our 60 degree rulers this month, since, you're, since you've got it out and you've polished it up and you're playing around with it again, we used, um, there's a pattern called um, table, t t this by um, pieces, pieces to Treasures. And they do a lot of patterns using, um, using toweling. So this toweling, is, <clears throat> I'm going to grab a little sip while we go over here. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is towing. Um, Moda sells it. We get it on the roll. There's obviously tons of different ones that you can choose from. We have more in the back as well. The one that we used for our topper is this one. But you can use just about any one that you want. I'm going to come back over here. Excuse me. And grab the pattern because it tells you exactly how much you need and what you're going to do with it and how to make your topper. Excuse me. <coughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Here's our topper <clears throat> made out of this toweling. Isn't that cool? And we also made a little itty bitty one. So you can make lots of different sizes depending on <clears throat> how you, where you put your ruler and how you use it. So you could, out of one piece of toweling, and you can just kind of, you can just kind of freestyle this even. So you can line it up if you wanted this all in the center <clears throat> by cutting, <coughs> excuse me, I would come probably halfway in. 
because that way I can come here. This is the center of your toweling. Here's my 60 degree ruler and I would find where my center is, line it up, cut my triangle. You could then come over here and cut another one exactly the same the exactly the same. Or when we did this one, we came along and we came and we actually used the whole piece. And because we cut from here to here, and this is a mirror image on either side, when I flipped the ruler, this one is going to be exactly the same as the first one I did. Does that make sense? Yep. Excellent. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> so it's a little hard to see. And when we do this, you almost have to take and kind of draw your lines out as you go along. So I would lay another ruler up against this. And she tells you how to do this in the instructions, how to elongate this ruler to come all the way out and cut all the way to the end. And by doing that and then by flipping it, you will be able to make one out of the length of fabric that you have. If you come over and you could do different ones. You could come up here and get this so all in this center would be navy blue. And then you could come over here and cut one and it would be completely different. It would be white in the center. So you can do all different kinds of things depending on where you cut and how big you cut your little pie pieces. I know, it's very cool. So it's a lot of fun to play around with. Um, we backed it and then bound it, and you're good to go. So much fun. And even you can even take where I've showed you before where you bring the back up and self-bind it with your backing. You can do that as well. Fun, fun, fun for your summer tables, fun for a hostess gift, um, for your picnic table. Summer's coming. We're going to be eating outside. This one would be great for 4th of July. Um, and she shows a lot of different things in here. She has, um, she has also added applique. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to lay this down. You can take a close look at that because if you used, say, this one, you can see how this one would give you this center to do the applique. So she came up with this one and she cut up into here, from here to here, and then had this coming around. That's cool. Isn't that cool? So you could add some applique in there. You could take this. The back is just regular fabric. Yep. And then we put some batting in. And a lot of times, if I want, if I want it to be bigger, these are all, um, these are all hemmed on both sides. So you could make matching napkins. You could make a little tea towel to go with. Um, a lot of times I'll just rip this out if I want more, to utilize the whole width of the fabric. I'll just, I'll just undo the stitching. It's very e simple and easy to do that. Um, this would be fun if you put this so that this was all in the center. And then you could get out your embroidery machine and applique something in the center of this. Would be a lot of fun. So there's so many different things that you can do with this. We will show you more things as time goes on. I have some bags. I have placemats. All kinds of fun Someone things. Was asking, what's the name of the pattern? Um, the name of the pattern is um, Eucalypt, Eucalypt Table Center. Eucalypt Table Center. Eucalypt Table Center. Very odd. Like eucalyptus, right? <laughs> Eucalypt Table Center. So she is from Australia, so that's why you might get a weird name. That's an Australian thing. Somebody comment, commented that Australian you can thing. pillows out of those. Pillows would be, a, I did make a pillow. Do you want to go grab that pillow, Sherry, that I made? I made that bolster pillow out of that. I think there's only one pillow. There's another pillow. Grab that, too. I did, I just, just kind of freeformed a pillow out of one, and it was, it's really cute. You can do all kinds of stuff with this. So lots of fun, and we have more in the back, and we will be showing you more projects as we go along. So I have some bag patterns, some table runner pattern, placemats, all kinds of fun things for your summer table. And I really like this kind of black and white and taupe color. That's really kind of pretty, too. So much, there's so much, you can just let your imagination just go. And so she's coming back.
So there's all kinds of other things that I have done with it. So I did do some um, applique on the center of one and then just raveled the edges to make a table runner, super easy. That I just took the fabric and yeah, and I just took like a little bolster pillow that I think I got at, um, at like uh, Joanne's. Oh, that grocery bag puller order thing. Yeah. So all I did was I used both of the edges that are, are already finished off, and I just decided however big that was going to be. So to seam here, and then I was able to with a um, with a thing about bobber, the um, a yeah, like a purple thing or whatever. Um, just threaded a f piece of um, twine through it and pulled it tight. Yeah, a bodkin. That's what I was trying to think of. Take a bodkin and just pull a piece of, of twine through, pull it tight, and tie it. And then there's there will be, um, we have patterns for those. We have to dig them out. So really fun pattern to make a cute little bag. Take to the beach, put on the boat, all kinds of fun things made out of the toweling. Toweling, fun and easy to use. So, yeah, really fun projects that you can do out of this. Um, you can make little cushions out of it. I've used it to make cushions. Fun, fun, fun. Use your imagination, girls. I know you can do it. Lots of fun things. So you'll see more projects using the telling as time goes on. So there is that. Cute tote bag. I know that tote bag is super cute and was really easy, too. And I know I have the patterns and the patterns for some other ones, and I think there's another one back there, too. So we will pull those out as, as we go along. So 60-degree ruler, use it on telling, use it on your border stripe fabric. You can make all kinds of things with that awesome 60-degree ruler. I know you've got one. Pull it out, dust it off. We've used them before. Last month, I'm going to come over here for a second, we talked about making the little hot pads and mug or mug rugs or like whatever. Um, we still have um, the patterns, the refills, all of those types of things over here. So you can pick those up. Those are all on the Patrick Party section of the website. If you didn't get one of those last month, you can do that. Now they have come out with a bigger version. And this is, they're calling this, I think they're calling this a table topper. It is called Point of View Folded Star Table Topper. So you can see it's much larger, and in the center, the center opening is much larger. Where this comes in, it's just very, very small. This has a larger opening here, and then you do your prairie points coming out. And let me show you why and how that works. So, <clears throat> as you can see on, and we have kits for this one, um, all made up, and those are on, are on the Patchwork Party section of the website. So we have little kits made up for the one that we have hanging there uh, because people just love that fabric, and it's going fast. So we made some kits. So <clears throat> the nice thing about having the larger center in the middle is if you have a pretty print that you want to um, show off, or maybe you have um, a little... A little panel piece that you want to show off and you kind of want to fussy cut that or as I did on these I did some machine embroidery so let me show you how this works I'm going to need this for a second so first of all you're going to need the point of view folded star table topper pattern in the pattern you will have enough interfacing template to make one okay so then there is also the refill that just has the um, interfacing in there to make three more. Okay, so you have your pattern with one interfacing template and then um, the refill pack that has three to make three more table toppers. So let me show you how this works. Um, I, you, you will get your piece of interfacing template. I think I'm going to move these out of the way to make life a little bit easier right now. There we go. Um, so your interfacing template looks like this. Ta-da! Oh, didn't flip out as best as I thought it was going to. I was going to do a ta-da! <laughs> and it sticks. 
Okay, there's two little templates on here. You're going to cut these apart, and you're going to first start out with the bottom, the small one. The small one is going to help you cut that center out. And then the large one is going to help you lay out your prairie points on top of your center. So what I did, fold that all back up, set it over here, is um, here's how you're going to start out. So I did a little machine embroidery, and I think your square needs to be about 12 by 12 for the center. Got a little, mark, a little kitty hair or something on it. So I did this cute little welcome to our hive um, machine embroidery. So I just went online, found a little machine embroidery, embroidered it out. You're going to cut that bottom piece off so that you end up with the small template. I'm going to lay it down on top of my design. So Joe's going to come in and look at this because I'm going to do two different. So I'm going to show you the other one that I'm also working on as we go along. So there's this one as well. So there are two sets of lines here. You can see this kind of dot and a dashed line here that's on the inside. Yep. And then you see the outer one that's just dots. Yep. You can choose either one of those lines to use to line up your design in. So on the Let Freedom Ring one, I lined it up with this center dot dash line. If I use the center line, and the instructions are very specific and tell you exactly how to do this. If you use the center line to, for your design, you're going to make four rows, five rows, I'm sorry, of prairie points. Right now I have like th three, line, three rows, four rows, I'm going to add one more. So since I cut this out using the in innermost line, that means I'm going to have more space to put prairie points. So I'm going to have five rows of prairie points on this one. For my beehive, I'm going to, because this is really close to that inner line, I'm going to use the outside line, actually, to cut from. Okay? And so, I'm get, so you can see through this so I can get, and it has center marks on here, and I can get it all lined up really super nice, just the way I like it. I'm going to go like, maybe like this, this, and this. Does that look good? How does that look, girls? Perfect. Everything look good? Okay, I'm going to put a couple pins in just to hold it in place. Just a couple. Make sure I still like it. See, because if I put my prairie points up to here, it gets kind of close to my wording. So my first line of prairie points is going to be down over here. So you'll see more of my little polka dotty fabric, and you'll be able to see my design really nice. Otherwise, my prairie points are going to come too close to my design. And so on this, I have my embroidered piece of fabric and two pieces of batting fused together underneath. You could use um, a piece of um, Insole Bright if you are worried about heat. I'm not so sure I'm going to put anything hot on this. Like, I'm not going to put a casserole dish or anything on it. It's just going to be a cute table topper. So I'm not really worried about putting something that's hot on there. So really what they have you do is um, fuse the, your outside, your top fabric to two pieces of batting and then quilt it. But I don't really want any quilting on this either. So I'm just going to leave it just plain in here because I don't think it's really going to do anything or go anywhere. So once you do that, you're going to cut out on your lines because you can kind of see how if I cut, I'm going to come along. That's really not my first color. But your line of, I'm going to use the orange because it will be easier to see. So as I layer this on here, I'm going to be coming down here with my prairie point. So you can see how it's going to come out mm -hmm. on that. So what you're going to do is come out and cut on layer 5, which is going to give you enough. So if I kind of come up here and cut, you're going to cut this out. 
next but I'm going to cut it if I used four it would be very close if I use this line to where my prairie points are going to come and intersect so you're going to come down to layer five you could even come down to layer six on this and cut around it so I'm going to take my cutter and a ruler and come all the way around it I'll just cut it on layer six so I've got plenty and I'm just going to go all the way around you can see how it's kind of I don't want to say octagon because there's 16 of these going around. So I'm cutting right on the line going around. Let me grab another cutter. See if this one cuts a little bit better. Out of there. Okay. And turn. Even if you had like your little turny rotary mat, this would be a great time to use that. And I just line it up and cut all the way around my design okay easy so far right you can do this follow the line get it all out of the way doesn't have to be perfect 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 but it is because it's going to be you're cutting right on the pattern so it's not hard to get it all perfect once you do this you're going to start cutting and making your prairie points. So on this one where I'm cutting it out farther and I'm using the outermost um, pattern to cut my design, I'm going to have four rows of prairie points going around. This one again, I use the innermost line so I'm going to have five rows. So I've got all these cut. I'm going to set those aside. I'm going to pull my pins out. Ta-da! It's all cut and ready to go. Now I'm going to take it and I'm going to pull out the top part of my design of my interfacing and I take it over to my iron and I press it. You can iron right on top of this. It doesn't melt. It doesn't stick. It's fine. I like it to be nice and flat. I don't like to have those folds in it. So I press it really nice and flat. Makes it a lot easier to work with. So now I'm going to be working on top. And you can fuse this right down on top of <clears throat> your interfacing. So now I'm going to line this up right along the pattern. Ta -da! Very cool. Good so far? Very nice. So now we're going to, <clears throat> we're actually going to start, and we're going to start lining up our prairie points right along the edge. And this, this edge of my prairie point is going to line up with one of the little straight lines that I cut. And it's also going to line up with this little diagonal line going through. And I'm going to use my little glue stick and start gluing. So I was doing this over the weekend. And of course, I ran out of glue stick. And did I have any refills? No. So here it starts laying the first row. And you're going to go all the way around. So when I came in today, I got a new refill for my glue stick. If you leave this sitting out and you lose your cap, this is going to dry out. Just tell them. How do I know that? How do, you know? How, do you know? How do I know that? It's going to dry out. It's going to be hard as a rock and you can't use it. So when you run out of your glue stick, and I pulled the, the rest of the old glue stick out of here, you end up with this little thing that looks like this. And you can buy... Um, when you buy one of these, you get, um, we have packs. You buy one of these and you get a refill. And so when you get your refill, this is what your refill looks like. And you're like, okay, what is this? So you open up the little cap and here's this. Makes sense, right? Uh-uh. <laughs> so what you're going to do is you're going to take your empty glue stick and you're going to push it right into that little gray cap that's in there. Okay, see it's stuck on there now? Then you're going to just pull this right off, and here's your glue stick. Wow. And then you will just 
twist it till it goes all the way back down. See how that worked? Everybody get that? Yep. Super easy. Because you're like, Is you're looking at it, it's like, what are you supposed to do? What am I supposed to do with this? And how does it work? And if you pull if you pull it all out of there and you're holding on to this, then the glue is like sticking to your hands and making a mess. So it's just made for you to just pop that right on there, pull the off the cap, and bring it right back down. Amazing. Super easy. But they don't tell you that. Why would they? You know, you don't need to know that, right? So that's how that works. Ask me how I figured that out. <laughs> so I have both of these glue sticks. Both of them were empty on the weekend, so I didn't get I didn't get everything done. So I just take that glue stick and I kind of make a triangle on the back of it, on the back of my prairie point. Then I'm going to line it up with the next straight line and the next diagonal line, and I'm going to go all the way around. Look at how pretty this is going to be. This is going to be fabulous. Okay. And unlike the other, the, your first set, I think we had four in the first row and maybe six or eight in the second row. This has 16 in every row. I know. So um, they're little five-inch squares, and then you fold them and you make them into prairie points. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll make, I'll make one row of prairie points and put them down, and then I'll make the next row of prairie points because I want to see what they look like. So I would continue going all the way around. As you can see, that is what I did with my Freedom Ring one. You know me and Patriotic. So uh, right now I have several rows going, and I'm going to put two more rows after this. So you can see how these have come all the way around, and they are pretty much sticking. Well, it's not sticking because this, but look at how well this is pretty much sticking to this. So it sticks pretty well <laughs> if you stick this to that, which I really didn't do. But it will stay, and now all I have to do is just pop that back on, slide this over here, and I'll be good to go and finish the rest of this. I just have to get it lined up. Line back up again and keep going around. So it's not hard. It's going to be so much fun. I have to get that lined up. There, 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 there. Right there. There we go. We're pretty good. We're pretty good. So I'm going to continue to go around. I'm going to add this one on. Once I get all the way done and um, they're stuck on, what you will do is you will, I'm going to take, now that it just actually did come off, what you will do is you will flip this over and you can see through the back so you can see where your circle is. So you will cut it on the circle going all the way around. Okay, so that will make your table topper round. Alrighty, once you've done that, you will take this guy, put him back on, and he will be all nice and round, just like he's supposed to be. And you will put another layer of batting, there we go, and the backing on, underneath this. Before you do that, that's what you want to do. Hang on. Before you cut it, before you flip it, what you're going to do is you're going to come through and you're going to stitch all the way through each one of these. Kind of like we did on the little one, but all the way through on the big one. Because what that is going to do is it's going to connect it to your back so that it's easy to flip over and cut your circle. So. When you're done, this is the smaller version. This would be your larger version. Exactly the same technique. Once you've got all your prairie points laid out, you will be able to then flip it over. And now you can see your circle. So whether it's your circle on your small one or your big circle, you'll be able to cut that circle out because you've already stitched through all of these prairie points. So they're having you stop here. Um, on mine up on top, I stitched all the way through, and that's kind of how I quilted my top one. So you can see how the lines kind of go all the way through. On this one, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stop here. So once you've done all that stitching, you will then be able to flip it over, cut your circle, then add your um, backing and your batting. And then on the big one, unlike this one where you kind of just stitch through that last row, you're going to stitch on every single row. So if we come up and look at the big one that I did, this one up here, 
you can see hmm? Um, the big one, you could kind of make it octagon. You would not be able to make it square. So um, on this one, you'll see that I first, I stitched all the way through these. I used invisible thread. I stitched all the way through, and that kind of quilted that center mm -hmm. as I went along. Then I flipped it over, cut my circle, added my batting, added my backing, and then I came along and I stitched close along each one of my prairie points, which quilts that when it's all done. Okay, makes sense? So that on the back you could kind of see where it's gone all the way through with my stitching on my prairie point. So that's what quilts it all together. Add in my um, binding, ta-da, you're done. <laughs> so fun, right? It is a lot of fun. It takes, yeah, it's an after, it, yes, you can do it in the afternoon. You can do it in an afternoon. I have all my prairie points folded and ready to glue down for this and I don't for that one but next month you'll see them all done I really I love these so much fun next month we're going to um, branch out a little bit more with this because I, I'm not I don't know I hope you're doing these I hope you're having fun with them because they are they kind of get addicting and once you <clears throat> get making the prairie points down they go really fast did you need me to show how to make a prairie point I think I showed it last month, but I can certainly show it again if you need to. It only takes a minute, but next month we're going to do Sunday brunch. So they've taken that little um, folded star and made a table runner and a little wall. I like the little patriotic wall hanging. Really cute. So inside of here... Inside of here are three what they're calling morning star templates. So you'll be able to make a table runner and the single little wall hanging. So we'll make these for next month, and I'll show you how that works. So really pretty. I love the little paint. This could hang in your window. Really kind of cool. So really fun. So we'll make these up for next month. I'm addicted. Can you tell? Linda says she loves the patriotic. I love the patriotic one. I think this is going to be really cool. Yeah, so if you have an embroidery machine, grab your, a little embroidery design and put it in the center. You could use a um, panel, if you have a little panel piece, a pretty floral print that you want to put in the middle. It's, it's a lot of fun. Captain Rondo wants to see a prairie point. Okay, yeah. let me do a prairie point for you. Super fast, super fun and easy. So let me slide this over, slide this over, and let me undo one because I don't have one that's not done. Okay, get my stuff out of the way. Let's get our little ironing board, slide everything over. Here we go. Okay, so you're going to start out with a square, and depending on what you're making, I should have spray, but that's okay. I don't. Um, depending on which project you're making, the, um, the little pot holders, your square will be a different size than your table topper. Your table topper, I think the squares are larger. So you're gonna start out, doesn't matter, you're gonna start out with a square. You'll take your square and you're gonna fold it in half like this. Got it? You can do that, right? Give it a little press. I give it like a little bit of best press just so that I get a nice crease. Then I take my thumbnail and I kind of put it in the center of the fold and I fold one corner down and I give it a press. And it's not going to stay because it's I'm probably folding it a wrong direction in a different direction than it was folded before. So if you have it popping open, if you just give every single one either a little spray of water or best press, this will stay just like this. These had little I put a little best press on these and beautiful. So at that point then I take my other thumbnail and I line it up my thumb like nail right like at the top point. Because what you don't want is you don't want to get something that looks like like that. You want a nice pointy point. So by you putting your thumbnail here and just folding it down, it really makes that nice crease and point. Yeah. Then there's a tool. There's a tool that does, I don't know what happened to my, um, my little thing. Um, but it just there's a tool that makes that point. You know what? A thumb, thumbnail will do it. 
Um, if you don't have, if you th if you don't have a thumbnail, use your little stiletto, anything that will sit in there to hold that crease as you flip it over will work. So that's all you have to do. That's a prairie point. Ta-da! Prairie point. So Lorianne says she's never done anything with prairie points, so she's going to give it a try. They're fun. And like I said, see, this is this is what happens if you don't spray it with Best Press. They kind of like to pop open. Um, so a little Best Press or a little water keeps those nice and flat and ready to go. So all you have to do is lay them out. So 16 go around these and like four and eight go around the other one. So they're a lot of fun. Then next month we'll do the table runner. It's going to be great. Okay. Have I forgotten anything? Do I have any questions that anybody has? You got them. I already told you all the questions. Okay. Oh, good. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. So don't forget to like us, please, and share us um, because your name will go in for a drawing for a gift card tonight. Um, we will be here on the second Monday in May. Which is May 13th. What is the final what is the final size of the big one? Oh the big one is oh seventeen. Seventeen inches is the big one. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one that's in the kit. Yep, seventeen inches. The nice size. Really nice size. So we will meet here. Again, next month, second Monday of the month, um, on May 13th. So please be sure to join us. Make sure you like us. Make sure you share us. Make sure you use PP20 when you shop tonight in the Patchwork Party section of the website so you get 20% off of all the beautiful things I've showed. So thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful month. We're going to have lots of things happening at the store, so be sure to check your calendar. Watch your emails because we've always got something going on and you won't want to miss it. And we will see you again very soon. Okay. Bye. Bye, Sherry. Bye, Sherry. <laughs>